Welcome grade 11s, the two owls are in the house, Looney and Llewellyn. How are you doing Llewellyn? Alright, and yourself? I'm great, thanks. Guys, it is Wednesday, we're here for your life sciences lessons, grade 11s. I hope you guys are just as excited as I am. Llewellyn has some great stuff planned for you. Llewellyn, what are we doing on today's show? We've heard about After Earth, right? And all this movie. And I said that we were going to do something nice about it. And I want to show you how the life science links up with it. So, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that, and right. we'll get into it. That's what cool. do you think, Lynn? <laughs> Guys, After Earth, we've been talking about it for so many weeks. It's finally, it's coming in on Friday, but Llewellyn's going to give you a great, great lesson about After Earth. I'd just like to thank Macmillan for sponsoring our great show. Remember, guys, to stay tuned because there is a competition for After Earth as well. But right now, we have the lesson plan for After Earth. So Llewellyn's going to give it to you. So Llewellyn, take it away. Cool. Now, firstly, we're talking about After Earth. So... Have a look at this trailer and see if you enjoy it. Um, let me see if I can find it just somewhere. Uh, off the earth, I want you to bring it there. And let's get it here. I've got it all nice and worked up for you here. Come, come. Got to understand, it take, takes a while to go through it. Hopefully we can get it right. Okay, well, what, what we, we want to get, uh, I'm sure we've, we've seen all the After Earth, and you've seen it a couple of times. So the nice thing about it is, if I have a look at this, it's about a couple of things. There it okay, is. Okay, so... Let's have a look at it, and um, we can see what it's about. It's hard to explain what science fiction is, but most of you know it when you see it. To many people, sci-fi can seem ridiculous, or uh, so unrealistic that they disregard it as fantasy. But the best science fiction can have a deep impact on our society. In 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Jules Verne imagined a submarine powerful enough to sink a large ship. At the time, this sub was a fantasy, but Verne's story inspired great minds to make this science fiction a reality. Okay. The upcoming now, film, as After you have Earth, a look at it, presents what a I've done is I've just future. showing you how the they're going to look about it, and you can see all the, all the parts of the video. Okay. Real life dad now, Will, if I have a look at Earth. this, and Katai's I can try and get it smaller again, right? On a this part that I'm busy playing around with here, okay? It's very important because this is the big scene, right? It's a nice thing about it is this is a website specially for this whole system. So what I want you to do is I want you to write down this website, right? It's www.lifeafterearthscience.com, right? That is a very nice, nice website. So let me just show you one more time round about what it's like, and then I'm going to go into the cru crux of the matter. Okay, if you look on the left, left hand side over here, on this side here, right? Um, well, this side, I don't know if you can see it. It's got home, it's got uh, the global changes, it's got everything you need, right? And the nice thing about this is, if I build this down, it's got biodiversity, it's got mass extinction, taking actions, lesson plans. That's a nice thing, especially for teachers. Lesson plans are there, right? And it explains a lot of things. Like, for example, let's go to biodiversity, right? If I can, if it will load. So slow, slow today, right? Biodiversity is there. Have a look at this picture, right? It's got some nice pictures. It explains biodiversity quite nicely, and it gives you different biodiversity. Now, if you have a look at it, over here, Okay, it's got two million, can you see it? Two million different species. And those two million different species is actually a video, right? Now that video explains a lot of things, okay, about it. But I don't want to tell you mostly about it because mainly I want you to go onto the site and I want you to explore and read. Because if you read it, you're going to understand a little bit more about it. Right, so to get to the proper trailer where we can get you all involved in that, okay, I'm going to show you how to get there. Okay, firstly, I will get to push the button, okay? Over here, you will see the different things. I went, you go to more, more clips. Once you want more clips, you will notice if you push on the side, there's a lot of clips. If I can pull it down, yeah, I know it comes, there we go. Look at all the clips, all on different things, and every single one of them will help you. So what I want to do, 
just to let you know what the movie is about. Okay, I'm going to click on the trailer. I want you to watch it, and once you've had a good look at it, we're going to speak about it. In the field, you are emotionally unpredictable. You confuse courage with recklessness. I'm not advancing you. You have a son that you do not know. He's reaching for you, and he does not need a commanding officer. He needs a father. Now go make some good memories together. While they're flying and they're talking, I want you to have a good look at what the Earth looks like, right? Because that's the main part. What the Earth looks like at that specific time or when they get back. Have a look at the trees, have a look at the animals, have a look at the temperature. So one of the important things that we're going to talk about. Crash landed. Two confirmed survivors. Do you know where we are? No, sir. This is Earth. There's an emergency beacon in the tail section of our ship. Approximately 100 kilometers from here. We need to retrieve that beacon. Or we're going to die. The temperatures on this planet fluctuate dangerously. Look at the, look at the temperatures. See how cold it is and how hot it is and it's raining all the time. To kill humans. Look at the size of those we things. They are humongous. We have animals that still live today, if you have a good look. They're coming up in a few minutes or so. Meters. 20. 10. It has found you. Look, can you see these primates that we know about? You wouldn't give any other ranger that order. You are not a ranger. You are my son. Let's see what else it is. Look at the, the weather. There is big eagles, Remember, huge eagles. Very real. I'd be worried. <laughs> That's why they say it's only evolves animal species. We are going to this. Primates are after you. They've got to fight for the bit to end. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now. What I'm going to do, I need to have a chat to you about things. In the movie, you saw some things, right? The movie is actually about a father and a son that don't, they, they, the father's hard on the son and they don't communicate that well, right? And the boy is mostly uh, he's into his training in that. He doesn't see a father figure, right? So now the two of them go off, right? And they go onto a plane and the plane crashes. Now, this movie is actually about a dad and a son coming together at the worst possible time, right? They're becoming one again, if you, if you understand. Hey, Looney, just yes. becoming one thing. Okay, there's a lot of action. There's a lot of drama, right? It'll keep you in the edge of your seats, okay? So you need to go see this movie. But my job today is to help you understand about the life science part of it, okay? Now, how did we get there in the first place? Okay, that is the main point. How did we get there in the first place? You will notice that it says 10, what's it? A thousand, a thousand years, years. A thousand years after they left. Now, it's 2013 now. We haven't left. So let's say it takes us another 20 years to leave, right? That's 2033, okay? Then we leave. Then a thousand years changes and it comes back. And then they come back. So things can evolve. Remember, evolution is quite a big thing. Things evolve, okay? Be but before that, why did we leave? What is the main reason why we left, okay? You'll notice I said they've destroyed the earth. Now, if you destroy the earth, we've got nothing to live with anymore, right? And everything that we do on this earth, everything we do on this earth, okay, there's one part that will destroy it the most, okay? If we have a look at making dams, Right? We have a look at energy. We have a look at population, at war, at anything. It all comes down to one specific thing. Okay, I've got a clip for you that we got from this uh, Life After Earth science uh, um, part. All the clips are there.
Okay, I've got it from there. I want you to have a look at it and pay attention to what's actually happening in there. Right, let's get it going. There we go, and we need to play. This is the story of how one species changed a planet. The latest chapter of our story begins in England 250 years ago. Fueled by coal, then oil, several brilliant inventions appeared. Have a look at the they two timelines. The Industrial Revolution. One on the right hand side and one on the left. Wildfire through Europe, North America, Japan, then elsewhere. The great railways, then cars and highways, connected people across the globe. Medical discoveries saved millions of lives. New artificial fertilizers meant we could feed more people. Population rose rapidly. But this was nothing compared with what was to come. Look at the 1950s. The 1950s marked the beginning of the Great Acceleration. Globalization, marketing, tourism, and huge investments helped fuel enormous growth. People swarmed to cities, which became even more powerful engines of creativity. In a single lifetime, the well-being of millions has improved beyond measure. Now, you look at that light Health, line that's coming wealth, along. That is a lot of other different things. So it's not so just much. population. It's carbon. It's population. It's, um, it's in a single lifetime, we everything that you can possibly think about. Right? Everything increases. We move more sediment and rock annually than all natural processes, such as erosion and rivers. We manage three quarters of all land outside the ice sheets. Greenhouse gas levels this high have not been seen for over one million years. Temperatures are increasing. We have made a hole in the ozone layer. We are losing biodiversity. Many of the world's deltas are sinking due to damming, mining and other causes. Sea level is rising. Ocean acidification is a real threat. We are altering Earth's natural cycles. We have entered the Anthropocene, a new geological epoch dominated by humanity. This relentless pressure on our planet risks unprecedented destabilization. But our creativity, energy and industry offer hope. We have shaped our past. We are shaping our present. We can shape our future. You and I are part of this story. We are the first generation to realize this new responsibility as the population grows. Okay, now, I've gotten back to this and now we need to start working on it. Can you think of what we'd actually do to destroy this earth? Think about it carefully. Everything we do comes back down to one thing and one thing only. Carbon. Right? Carbon is what destroys this earth we have too much carbon, we are in big trouble. Because what carbon actually does is it keeps heat in, for instance, right? It takes away, if there's too much carbon, there's not, not enough oxygen, okay? So there's a lot of things. Now, how do we mess around with carbon? That, that's just between me and you. How do we actually mess around with carbon? Okay, now, we've got, if I go back, we've got the first part of to get rid of carbon dioxide because there's always some way to get rid of it and we need to find it so as we know we have already gone through it okay I'm gonna have a look at a couple of things I'm gonna have a look at firstly photosynthesis then I'm gonna have a look at cellular rest respiration because they work hand in hand and then I'm gonna have a look at the footprints right the carbon footprints something that you and I put on this earth it's about how much carbon we actually put on this earth. Right, that is what we're going to look at. So, what I'm going to do, before I actually let this go and we start off with photosynthesis, I'm going to take a break because we've watched the two videos that I want, wanted to see and we're going to give it horns when we come back. Right, Looney. All right, guys, we are going to take a very short break. So exciting. We're doing after Earth, the After Earth lesson plan, guys. It's too great it's too awesome you've seen the two videos remember we do have the competition so go for a short break and we'll be back and i'll tell you more about this competition when we're back see you then guys
Welcome back, Mindsetters, from that break. Guys, you know, today we're talking about After Earth. Our whole lesson is based on After Earth. As you know, we have a competition running. And as you can see, I'm wearing one of your goodies, guys. So this is a sweet band from our goodie bag from the After Earth competition. All you need to do, guys, in, in order to enter is go on to learnextra.co.za forward slash After Earth. And grade 11's your code word for today is society. Simple. Society. No society would live in a society. Yes, that. Society is your code rate. So all you need to do in order to win these great prizes, guys, I just want to show you this pen. I've been showing everyone this pen, guys. Light's blue. It's got blue light. Who has a pen that's got blue light, guys? No one. No one on this earth. So, and, and it's called After Earth. So After Earth, you know, maybe we'll have pens that have blue light. We also have a cool note pad where you can write all your notes, you see when Llewellyn is teaching you guys and you need to write down extra stuff, you can win this great notepad, guys. And we also have this great t-shirt. And remember, you also win those two tickets. So it's all these great goodies plus those two tickets, guys. All you need to do is go on to learnextra.co.za forward slash after earth and enter your code which, which is society. I will post it on Facebook so you guys can go onto Facebook and check it out. Our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash learn extra. I'd just like to congratulate Masetsu Maredi who has won herself two tickets and this great goodie bag to go see after earth. Masetsu Maredi, you have won yourself two tickets and the great goodie bag plus the sweat fan. So congratulations to you. Enter guys and you also stand a chance to win all these great prizes. So I'll take us right back to Llewellyn. Society. Why not something small <laughs> like Bob? Or, you know, something easy for we us. We have to complicate it. We have to. Okay, now, After Earth is so cool, right? It's a nice movie. But you must always remember that when they do things, they look at specific things in life science. Now, the reason why I've taken this part about the carbon dioxide is that you can be asked this in an exam. Right. So if you're still write, writing your exams, you're going to write it and you're busy studying, right? Because you are going to write it at the end of the year as well. Make sure you know this, this stuff. So that's a nice part. That's why I'm going over it. And when you go see the movie, just think about this, why the earth happened the way that it did, right? And why they moved away and why they came back and everything. Right. So let's have a look at it. Photosynthesis. Okay. With photosynthesis, of course, we know that there's two phases. Okay. Firstly, there is the light phase and there is the dark phase. Plain and simple. Light phase is light dependent. You can say you get two phases, your light dependent and your light independent. Okay? So light phase is dependent or it needs light to work, right? The dark phase is light independent. It does not need light. So it can work during the day when there is light, and it can work during the night where there is no light. Do you understand? That's the important thing you've got to understand. Okay, now let's have a look at it. I've made the two different cycles, right? You have the light phase and you have the dark phase. Over here, I've put the light phase, and over here, I've put the dark phase. Plain and simple, right? The light phase, can you remember what's so important about the light phase? The light phase catches the energy from the sun. That's why it's the light phase, right? And what it does is it takes that energy, yes, and it takes a water molecule, and with that energy, it splits the water molecule. You, you understand? So it grabs that hydrogen, it puts all the energy in that hydrogen, making a hydrogen-rich compound, and it makes ATP. And if I take a water molecule, so let me put it here, if I take water, H2O, right, and I split it, down the middle, what am I going to be left with? I'm going to have an H, right? Forget about the twos at the moment. And I'm going to have an O. What is the O? What do we want in is oxygen. Very important. So we need oxygen, okay? And that's going to come back into play just now. Okay, so let's have a look at it. Light phase. This occurs on the grana, okay? Big word, grana. Here it is. Have a look. Grana of the chloroplast. What is a chloroplast? Now, if I have a look at this, I've been mentioning photosynthesis and dark phase and light phase, and we don't even know what a chloroplast is. Okay? A chloroplast is what we find inside an animal cell that has to go through photosynthesis. Right? If I had to do a quick drawing of it, I would give it one of these and line, 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 with a long line and a line, 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 and another long line, 
have, I'm sure you guys have seen these before, right? That is a chloroplast. That's where this happens, okay? That there holds the chlorophyll, right? The part that traps the light, the chlorophyll, and it keeps it to split the water molecule. Okay, now, they talk about thylakoids and granum, okay? Let's have a look. A grana, okay? We need to know what a grana is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've drawn it so I can see what you know, right? And I want to know, send it through. I always do this, so make sure you're always on your toes is to keep you awake. I want to know what is a grana and what is a thylakoid, okay? Send it in as quick as you can. We need to get it going. I want to see how clever you guys are. Okay, leave it there. Thylakoid and grana. Okay, now, the energy is absorbed, right, by the chlorophyll that is found in the chloroplasts. Don't forget that, okay? That absorbs the light or the energy, plain and simple. Okay, let's move it down. Some of the light energy is used to make ATP. What is ATP? Can you remember what ATP is? ATP is a taxi to carry energy, okay? It's a taxi to carry energy. It's adenosine triphosphate. Let's see, I'm sure I put it down here. Adenosine triphosphate. Very easy, very simple. Anything that we're talking about with energy is always going to try and be ATP. We want to make ATP. ATP is our energy-rich source. Right, then, it also makes, like I said, it's going to go and it's going to split water, okay? And we're going to end up with hydrogen and we're going to end up with oxygen. What are we going to do with that oxygen as a plant? Let's try Luna. Sorry. What are we going to do with the oxygen as a plant? We're going to... Take it in. We're going to give, give it, it all. away. <laughs> give it away. <laughs> We're going to give it away. I'm so sorry. It's fine. We're taking in carbon dioxide later on, but we're giving oxygen away, right? So we need to give oxygen away. And what's left is hydrogen. And hydrogen is a molecule that is filled with energy in this situation, right? We need to take that hydrogen and we need to take it somewhere. So let's have a look. The molecule that we make, right, is energy rich. Hydrogen. The hydrogen is full of energy. We need it. We need to send it somewhere else. Okay, so we have a rich, and oxygen, as I said, is released into the atmosphere. And what else did we gain? Right, right from the beginning, we gained ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And that adenosine triphosphate and the hydrogen is going to go to the next phase. So if I have a look at it, there we go. Here we made hydrogen, right, if I make it nice, and we made a TP, that will write nicely for me today. All of this we're going to send to the dark phase. You happy? Okay? We're sending it to the dark phase. We send it there. We need to do something with it. At the beginning, we've just made stuff. Now we're going to send it to get used. Right, and we're going to make something else, the important stuff. Okay, let's have a look at it. Dark phase. This occurs in the stroma. Stroma. What is the stroma? Let's see. You can get it. Okay. The stroma of the chloroplast. Now we're starting to look at, I've already given you a clue where the stroma is. It's inside the chloroplast. And I'm talking about, I drew those lines. So I'm going to give you a clue because Looney hasn't told me there's an answer yet. Is there an answer yet for my question? No. No. So I need to tell you. Those little lines could either be, okay, think about it, could either be a thylakoid, could either be a granum, or it could be the stroma. I need you to tell me which one it is and what is what. Okay, it's one of those are the lines. One of them is the group of lines and one of them is everything around it. Okay, so put them in order and I want to know which, which is which. Right, okay. Now, glucose molecules are produced in the form of uh, forming from carbon dioxide. So think about it. What is glucose? If I had to put glucose in as a formula, let's have a look at it. Glucose is C6, H12, right, and O6. Okay, that's what it is. If I take in, if I bring hydrogen, right, I brought in a hydrogen molecule from the light phase, what else is left? C and O. So what do I need? I need CO2. So it takes in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, Okay, it takes in the carbon dioxide and it puts it with the hydrogen and now we've got energy, an energy-rich substance called glucose, something that we can use. 
Right, so let's have a look. The carbon dioxide, or ATP, are energy-enriched hydrogen. Oh, the whole thing there, the energy from the, from the ATP and the energy from the, the hydrogen plus the carbon and the oxygen joining in, that is what we need to survive. Okay? Plants as well. You're, you're all with me. Now, the light energy is absorbed by the light phase, which we explain, and that's where the energy starts. The energy starts in one place. The light splitting that water molecule. Can you remember? Very, very important. And then is stored in the bonds of the glucose molecule. See? The carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen. All those bonds together, they stick together so that um, we can make energy. It stores the energy so that we can use it later. Okay? I don't want you to forget glucose. Okay? Very important. Okay, now, I brought down the sum, okay, and here it is. Hopefully you can see it quite nicely. Photosynthesis consists of the following. Right, water, remember, we're going to split it, okay? Carbon dioxide, we're going to take it in, right? We're going to get light from the sun and other enzymes. You don't have to know those enzymes so well yet. Right, and what are we going to end off with? We're going to end off with glucose that we're going to use and oxygen that we're going to give off. Okay, and because you guys are so smart, I did the exact same thing, but underneath it, using the chemical formulas. Right, so of course, water plus carbon dioxide makes glucose and oxygen, and it's a balanced equation for scientists. Okay, got to be balanced. Whatever you put, whatever I put in here, I've got to get the same amount on the other side. Otherwise, where's things going to disappear to? Okay, just to put it out there. Okay, now, that is carbon dioxide. Oh, that is photosynthesis. Okay, now, if I have a look at it, the next thing we're going to have a look at, the important part of photosynthesis, the production of oxygen, nice and easy, okay, absorption of carbon dioxide, takes in carbon dioxide, and the, produ the, the production of food. Okay, so, if I have a look at it, I have to put it for me. I'm going to be selfish, okay? Produces oxygen. I need that to live, me, personally, right? I love oxygen, because without it, it's going to be a bit stuffy, am I right, Looney? Right, not going to be quite nice. Then, absorption of carbon dioxide. I need something to get rid of the carbon dioxide. It's poisonous to me after a while, right? Get rid of the, the, the oxygen. I mean, get, get rid of the carbon dioxide and make more oxygen, okay? So that's what the plant does. And lastly, trust me, you are going to get hungry sometime or another. And that food gives you energy. You need the food. So that's what photosynthesis actually does. You, you understand? You're with me. Very important. Those are the three things. So without plants, without plants, we cannot survive as humans or as animals, put it that way. Okay? Everything is reliant on a producer. They produce food through photosynthesis. Okay, now, if I go to the next one. Oh, I need to learn to do this. Photosynthesis increases. There's three things that we've got to have a look at. Photosynthesis increases by three things. Firstly, if light, okay, if light intensity increases, see, if the light goes higher more, then you're going to get more photosynthesis. Up to a point, and then that's it. Right? Up to a point. If you get to that point, right, and you still need more, more, more light, it's not going to happen. Let's think about it in this way. Um, how did I put it? I was explaining it to the other day to, to some of my boys. Um, if I have a million bricks, right, and I want to build a house, okay, and I have five people, yes, if I have one brick and give them one brick at a time, okay? They will lay one brick at a time, yes? If I give them two bricks at a time, they can lay two bricks at a time. So the more bricks they get, the faster they work, yes? But what happens if I give them 10 bricks at a time? Can they lay all 10 at the same time? No, you can lay two bricks at a time, but you cannot lay 10 bricks. I don't have that many arms. So even though there's more bricks, I can't lay it faster. Does that make sense? The quicker, the, the more light there is, the more photosynthesis, but only up to a specific point, and then it'll only stay that, that much. Same with the next one. 
The next one we have a looking at is how much carbon dioxide is in the air. If I have so much carbon dioxide, you can make so much energy. If I increase that carbon dioxide, I can make more energy. But if I can only accept so many, and there's a lot more, I can only do so much energy. So it increases, the photosynthesis increases as there becomes more carbon dioxide, but then it becomes up to a certain point, and then it goes leveled out. And then lastly, the last one we've got to have a look at is photosynthesis and temperature. Okay? Think about it. I've explained this to you before. If you're very cold, you don't want to run as much. The warmer it gets, right, the more you want to exercise. So the colder it is, the less you want to, the, let's say, the colder it is, the less photosynthesis wants to happen. As it heats up, right, we're going to get more and more photosynthesis up to a certain point. What happens if it's 40 degrees in the shade? Do you want to go run the comrades? I wouldn't want to, hey? <laughs> no, I want to sit at home in a, in a nice air-conned room, right? If, the ink, if it does that, what happens to photosynthesis? It starts decreasing, like everything else. Right. I've given you a lot of information in a short period of time. So I think we need a stretch. What do you think, Looney? A bit of a stretch, right? When we come back, we're going to talk, talk about cellular re respiration, and then I've got something to show you. Right. All right. Mindset says we are going to take another short break. As Llewellyn said, cellular respiration, whatever that is, because I never did life sciences. You're going to look at that after the break. Remember, I'll tell you about Korea and Daba as well. So do stay tuned, Mindsetters. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you guys are ready to go. So, um, Llewellyn asked a question about all these things that I don't know about, but we've got the answers from two great girls. You guys are so smart. Nokwanda Mtembu and Lebohang. So, basically, I will say this, but I know nothing about what I'm talking about, right? So, you said the group of lines is the grana, which is correct, and then a single line is the thylakoid, which is also correct, and then liquid in, in the chloroplast is the stroma so congratulations to you guys korean dollar is coming up all you need to do to register yourselves and your friends and your cousins their cousins your friends everybody it is from the 20th to the 22nd of june all you need to do is go on to koreandalba.co.za it is for free guys and it is at the santon convention center so make sure you register yourselves because we'll be there and everybody else from mindset will be there like all the presenters like indy abram and i and everybody else that you like so make sure guys you go to koreandalba.co.za to register yourselves it just gives you a great platform to know which career path you want to take and it gives you more information on what career path you want to take so make sure you register yourselves and your friends and congratulations to Lebo Khang and Nokwanda for getting the answer correct. Lueli. Cool. Here it is. Okay. The whole thing together is a grana, right? One of the little lines is a thylakoid. So grana is made up of a lot of thylakoids, right? And the liquid on the inside is called a stroma. So very well done to the people that get that, that got that right. There was a lot of people that got one of the on answers right and they didn't answer the others. But normally when I ask for all three, you must try giving me all three. It helps a lot. Right. So I said we're going to go on to the next section, which is cellular respiration. Now, that is German, right? It's not as bad as you think. If you were with me last week and we went through it, you will understand it very, very easily. So I'm going to help you one more time and we're going to get through it like this. Right. Let's have a look at it. In the beginning, you get Glucose. There it is. What is glucose? Remember, the plant made it. Right. We're going to take in glucose, and to break glucose down into a simple fruit, like sugar, it's called fructose, right? We use ATP. So we take ATP, or energy, and we break it down, and we use it energy to break off and to make it into a simply compound, right? And that is where you get your two three-carbon compounds, yes? Okay, now, the two three-carbon compounds, if I had to do it this way, uh, it was a, a six-carbon compound, and it's split into two three-carbon compounds. I'm just going to write them there. Because it's unstable when it's fructose. It doesn't like being, or fr fructose, it doesn't like being a long chain. It breaks up into two. Okay, now, for the two-carbon compound to get down to a specific acid that we can use and make energy out of, okay, it's called pyruvic acid. Just by moving to pyruvic acid, we're going to make two ATPs, right? On the one side, we're going to make two ATPs, 
right? And on the other one, we're also going to make two ATPs. And we're going to make NADH. Now, NADH is, NAD is a carrier and hydrogen, of course, energy-rich hydrogen. So we're going to make two NADHs. Nice, easy, simple. Okay, I'm just running through this because this is the type of stuff that you're going to be asked in your tests. Right, so there we go. Then, the pyruvic acid, this one, okay, it gets sent to this big thing here. It's called the, it's called the Krebs cycle. But before it, pyruvic acid, before it gets to there, right, it's got to lose something. It's got to be broken down any, uh, further, right? So the first thing it does is we gain another eight, uh, NADH molecule, right? And it gives off, it releases two carbon dioxide molecules. So what have we made already? Carbon dioxide. Okay? We've made carbon dioxide, so we're giving that off into the atmosphere. Remember, plants took it in and gave off oxygen. We're giving off carbon dioxide. Okay, then we're going to go into this Krebs cycle. Now, the Krebs cycle, you don't need to know in the detail that I've put it here. All you need to know is in the Krebs cycle, okay, we make three NADHs, okay, and we make two, well, one FADH per Krebs cycle. And remember, there's three. Oh, there's two of them. Right, so that's why they say two NADH, two NADH, two NADH, and two FADH. That means there's six NADHs in here. There is four F, A, or oh, it should be A, D, H, twos. There's four of them. Okay. And then, of course, we've got the ones here from the top. Not too difficult. Very easy. I'm trying to, like, let you understand this as quick as possible because there's other things I want to throw in there as well. Okay. And then, that was just summer. That was just to make something. Okay. Now we need to take that stuff and make energy. We need energy. And what? how do we have energy in our body? ATP. Can you remember? It's always ATP. Okay. We send it through to the electron transport system. Okay. And for every NADH, I normally say it's like stairs. So if I do this, there it is, stairs. For every NADH, right, for every NADH that jumps down, jumps one, two, three. Three. Every time it goes there, every time it jumps, right, it makes ATP. ATP. I'm trying to write it. ATP. It makes three ATPs for every NADH. Okay? And then for every FADH, it only makes two. It's a little bit weaker than NADH. Right. So FADH makes two and NADH makes three. Okay, and in this whole process, this whole process, we make, at the end of this whole process, I'm going to tell you now, over here, remember we made two ATPs, and two ATPs means four, but we wanted to take two to replace the two that we used up here. Can you remember it? Okay, that means you gained two. So in this part, in glycolysis, we gained two ATPs. Simple, easy, let's relax. In the whole process, cellular respiration of this whole thing, okay, whole thing together, we make 38 ATPs. So when you count it, there's two here, okay, then we're going to have a look at, there's one that's made over here, another ATP molecule that's made over here, so there's another two, so there's two ATPs over here, which makes it four ATPs already, and then two, four, six, eight, 8 times 3, and then you've got 2 times 2, right? And then you've got another 2 here, and you've got another 2 there. So it all comes up to 38 ATP. I know it sounds so confusing at the moment, right? But I promise you, sit down, have a look at the notes. It's not as difficult as you think. Just relax, breathe, and you can do this. It's very simple. Okay, so that is what happens. Glycolysis, as I said, we gets happened in the, all of this gets happened in the mit mitochondria. Very important. It happens in your mitochondria, right? Phosphorylation happens at when we use 
it gets used in oxidative phosphorylation. That is the electron transport system that I was talking about. Right? The Krebs cycle, as I said, I've explained it. It gives off carbon dioxide as well, and we're making NADH and FADH2s. Okay, and then the last one is oxidative phosphorylation. That's where we actually make the energy or the ATP. Okay, now the sum, let's watch this carefully. This is where it becomes important. Okay, we take glucose and oxygen and we give off water, carbon dioxide, and we gain ATP. So we keep that, right? We give that off to the atmosphere because you can feel it. And you give that off to the atmosphere. So carbon dioxide is given off and oxygen is used. Okay, that is what I wanted to speak about. That's where we come to the crux of the matter. I changed that for a reason, so just relax. Okay, now, if you have a look at it, if plants are going through photosynthesis and taking in carbon dioxide and giving off oxygen, right, and we are taking in oxygen and giving off carbon dioxide, do you not think that's a balance? Vinny, what do you think? That's just a balance, eh? The plant takes in oxygen and humans take in, you know, it, it's, it's a balance. Everything works so nicely together. It's, it's nice. It's a complete nice balance. But we're not going to do that. Because what do we do? We go through forestation. We cut down the forests. And if we're cutting down the forests, right, if we cut down the forests, we the less plants to take away the carbon dioxide. And why do we cut down forests? Because we need space to live, or we want expensive furniture, or things like that, do you, or firewood. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So cutting down forests, I mean, you can plant a small little tree. It's going to take years to become nice and big and do as much photosynthesis as the big rainforests are doing. Right. So that's the first thing. That's just putting it out there. There's something small. And then one of the important things we have to have a look at, right, is this. It's a video clip. It's short. It's simple, and it's going to tell you something that is quite important. So watch it nice and carefully. The carbon crisis in 90 seconds. This is a banana. This is a chunk of coal. The banana is sweet and delicious, fun to eat. The coal is none of those things. But they are much more alike than they seem. Both were made by plants and store energy from the sun and carbon gas from the air around us. When you eat the banana, you use the energy stored in the banana to run and jump, and you release carbon gas back into the air around you. Now, carbon in the banana is young, fast carbon. Just weeks ago, the banana was carbon gas in the air, and hours after you eat it, you breathe out the same carbon back into the air. When we burn coal in power plants, we use the energy stored in the coal to generate electricity that powers homes and factories, and we release carbon gas back into the air around us. However, the carbon in the coal is old, slow carbon. Plants took the coal carbon out of the air hundreds of millions of years ago. That carbon has been locked up ever since, and would stay locked up if people hadn't dug up the coal and burned it. So now, by burning coal and oil, people are adding lots and lots of old carbon to the atmosphere faster than plants in the oceans can take it out. Why do I care? Because carbon gas in the atmosphere acts like a blanket, trapping heat and making the whole planet warmer. Hi, my name is Peter, and I'm an Earth scientist at NASA. At NASA, we use satellites to study the Earth and how it's changing. And we can see that the ice caps and the glaciers are melting, and that the land and the atmosphere and the ocean are getting warmer. So I know that it's important that we are very careful about how we produce and use energy so that we burn less fossil fuels so we can keep the planet from getting too warm. Right. <clears throat> Did you understand that? Did you see how important that is? So even though we are breathing out and we've got that balance between the plants and the animals, right? We, as humans, are destroying the earth because we're burning things like fossil fuels. And everything that we burn creates carbon. 
and the more carbon we produce in the atmosphere, the warmer it gets, the more we go through global warming, the more the ice caps melt, and if the ice caps melt, the sea rises. You, are you understanding what I'm, what, how I'm getting this right? I mean, plants, we're making less plants, we're killing off the plants, right, so that we can have space to live. And if there's space to live, there's less plants. And if there's less plants, the less it can change the carbon dioxide back into oxygen. Right, so do you understand where this whole thing links with after Earth? Think about it. This, this is how I picture this, this movie going. Remember, it's getting released on Friday, so don't wait. Go and have a look at it. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to go as quick as I possibly can. Right? So this is how I'm picturing what this director was trying to do. Right? He knows that humans are busy destroying the earth by using a lot of carbon, burning fossil fuels. And remember that even your electricity burns fossil fuels. Right? So you burn fossil fuels. Right? We cannot live. The earth becomes so unstable that we leave earth and we go to, let's say, Mars. Right? And then we stay on there. Okay? The earth, as nature, will repair itself. Because the plants are not going to die. There's more than enough carbon dioxide for it, right? We've destroyed the ozone layer, so there's going to be a lot more heat, remember? It'll increase photosynthesis up to a point, and then it'll decrease it. But it, let's say that it, it gets to a certain temperature. The plants are going to thrive. Remember, animals adapt to their environment. So they're going to start changing, okay? We as humans are the only ones that change our environment to support ourselves, Okay, if you have a look at it, if a bear is cold, he goes and hibernates. Okay, there's no need for him to run around in the cold, right? Us, it's cold. Do we stay in bed? I would love to. What do we have to do? Put extra clothes on, but, right? Put the heat on. Put the heat on. What are we doing? Burning fossil fuels. You, you get where I'm coming from. That's how it works. Okay, now, if I have a look at this, I wanted to tell you about a thing called the carbon footprint. Now, carbon footprint is what you, how, carb, how you use carbon on this earth, okay? which is quite cool. It's a nice thing to look at. I want you to have a, understand this. Carbon is m measured in tons and how much it's put out there. Right. So if you have a look at it, I put a nice foot there because that is cool. A nice foot, and it tells you petrol, your aeroplanes, transport, your, all that other stuff. Right. All that together is your carbon footprint. So let's have a look at it. When you heat your house with oil, gas, or coal, right, you have to burn it. And the burning of that gives off carbon dioxide. Do you understand that? Even if you use an electric heater, same thing. You still have to burn it because electricity is what gives us the energy, right? The, uh, the electricity gets made by coal, okay? So are you with me? Let's have a look here. When you buy food that is produced, right, other food goods also eliminate certain carbons. Okay, when you eat the food, you're going to produce carbon, that's fine. Okay, it's normal. Okay, we're just looking at the food that you eat, right? What you're burning, what you're giving off, driving a car. And the things that I found the most interesting, okay, is this. I want you to try and see if you can work this out. Okay, let me bring it down. Each of the following activities add one kilogram of carbon dioxide to the air. One kilogram. Okay, let's have a look. Traveling by public transport... So train or bus, a distance of 10 to 12 kilometers add one kilogram of carbon. Now, if I'm driving 10 kilometers and Looney's driving 10 kilometers, that's 20, kilometer, that, that's 20 kilograms of carbon in the air. We're just giving off, right? Let's have a look at this. You won't believe some of these things. Driving your car for 6 k's, right, does the same. At 6 kilometers, yeah, does exact, exactly the same, okay? If we have a look, a plane, driving a plane for 47 for 22 kilometers, but my most important one out here that I love, right? The production of carbon dioxide in America, American cheeseburgers, a third of carbons give off, how much was it? It was, uh, let's go back up there, a kilogram. So think about it. Every time they have one American cheeseburger, one, it gives off 3.1 kilograms of carbon just by eating a burger. You, you, you get what I'm trying to say? Can you imagine, Looney? Mm. Mm. Eating a burger, you're giving off carbon. Like, it's unbelievable, right? Ver watching um, your computer, 32 hours, also important. Okay? Using all of that is very important. 
This is working out your carbon footprint. Everything you do leaves carbon on the earth. Now, the whole point about it is to leave as little as possible. Okay? If we leave as little as possible, we can protect the earth. Right? And that is what this movie is trying to get to us. Protect the earth, that we don't need to leave it. Okay? So, guys, I hope you had a good time. Right? And I will see you soon. Looney. <laughs> All right. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have taken a great lesson from After Earth and the actual lesson plan and all that Llewellyn has told you about. Remember to take care of our Earth, guys. Don't emit a lot of carbon dioxide. That's all I know about this life sciences lesson. Guys, thank you so much. I'd like to thank Macmillan for sponsoring our great show. And we will see you next time, guys. Bye.